Debunking the housing crash, why the US housing market is stronger than COVID-19. Look, I'm gonna to talk to you about a few reasons why we think that the US housing market is going to do incredibly well in 2020, despite what's going on economically, the stay at home orders, and all of the fear and really maniacal media coverage around COVID-19. Now, in no way do we mean to diminish the responsibility that we all have to be safe in these times. And of course, our hearts go out to the families that are impacted by this virus. At the same time, there's a lot of misinformation going on out there. And there's five reasons why we believe the housing market will do very well through 2020 and beyond. Number one, there's record low inventory of housing in the United States right now. You see, as of year end 2019, there were only 1.8 million homes for sale. Now think about the size of the United States that has 328 million people and 128 million households. 1.8 million homes for sale is a record low as compared to that number of American households. Now, looking back in time, going back to the Great Recession, we were in a very different place. You see, entering that recession at the very peak of inventory, there were 3.7 million homes for sale. So we're roughly half the amount of homes for sale in 2020 as we were when we went into the Great Recession. Now, any of us who took Economics 101 understand a little bit about supply and demand. When you have solid demand for any asset and you have a very limited amount of supply, you have more buyers chasing a limited supply of goods, you're going to get buyers creating kind of a feeding frenzy. They're competing with one another to find the best homes and that enables sellers to dictate the price and is very likely to continue pushing prices higher. Number two, rising home ownership rates across the country. You know, between 2006 to 2016, we saw the home ownership rate go down substantially. And really this isn't surprising. We saw many young millennials watch their parents go through foreclosures, lose their jobs, divorces in some instances, and that whole time period, especially around real estate, was very traumatic for those people who owned property and for those younger millennials who were watching the stresses that their parents were going through. As a result, home ownership rates across the country plummeted into 2016. But something happened in 2016. The market bottomed in terms of home ownership rates and has started to ascend. We're now four years into that recovery and the increase in home ownership rate shows no signs of slowing down. Number three, demographics are changing and they're changing in the favor of real estate and housing. You see, in 1973, the Supreme Court decided in the case of Roe versus Wade. And in that year, they legalized a woman's right to have an abortion. Now that event impacted birth rates for the following decade. And according to the National Association of Realtors, the average age of today's first time home buyer is 33 years old. So if we take the date of Roe versus Wade, 1973, and we add 33 years to that date, we come up with 2006. Well, what happened in 2006? Inventory of housing was at an all-time high at 3.8 million homes for sale, right when the demographic trend started to slow down in terms of first-time homebuyers because of that 33-year delay from Roe versus Wade. Now, fast forward to today, and what you can see since about 2013, we're now seeing more household growth in the blue bar than we have annual house completions. So when you have more household formations and less homes being built, you start to see that demographics are again on our side. 
And according to the St. Louis Fed and the U.S. Census Bureau, we see that home prices nationally bottomed in about 2009, of course, right in the middle of the Great Recession. And as we look at home values nationally, we'll see that right around 2013, 2014, when household formation started to increase again, again, we began to get demographics on our side, we start to see home values really start to appreciate and move faster. Again, this is all tied back to that Econ 101 that we all took and learned about in school. When we have increasing demand from improving demographics, we will have a very high likelihood that home prices will go higher. Right as we start to see demographics on our side, meaning more and more average first time home buyers of the age 33, we see a pretty significant lag in new home construction. You see, new home construction peaked in late 2006 when there was almost 2.2 million new homes being built. We see a very steep crash in that number and we'll see the number of new home construction dropping well under the 800,000 per year mark. Now, over the last 10 years since 2010, we have seen some increase in the new home construction, but you'll notice that those new home construction numbers remain stubbornly below the $1.6 million average, which has been the average number of new homes built going all the way back to 1960. So we've gone an entire decade from 2010 to 2020 with the average number of homes being built well below the trend line that goes back nearly 60 years. Now wait, there's an even more interesting point to this slide. Look at the very far right of the slide. You see that sharp dash lower? Well, that's the number of new housing starts that have been slowed dramatically because of COVID-19. So while demographics are on our side, there's more first time home buyers turning 33 than ever. More of those millennials are coming to that age, which is the average age for a first time home buyer. It's hitting us right at the point where new home construction numbers are crashing. As we take a look at this birth chart broken down by each generation, we're going to see a big dip in the number of 33 year olds in 2006. Those are people turning 33 years of age in the year 2006. Demographics were not on our side. If we fast forward to today, we will see that we are right in the middle of a very solid uptrend of Americans turning 33 and being very probable to become first time home buyers. We can also see as we look to the right of this graph that we have some very good demographic years ahead. Number four, home prices are being aided by record low interest rates. You see, when the economy starts to slow down, the Federal Reserve tries to help stimulate the economy. One of the ways that they do this is by manipulating, if you will, or helping long term interest rates. Currently, they have started buying mortgage backed securities, which is the precursor to interest rates, as well as long dated U.S. Treasury bills as the Federal Reserve comes in to basically create an artificial market to buy those bonds, both treasury bills and mortgage backed securities. It drives the interest rates that you and I pay on our mortgages and other loans down. As the cost to borrow goes down, the Federal Reserve assumes there'll be more buying and therefore it helps to stimulate the economy. Now, going back to 1970, we can see that there has been seven recessions over that period of time illustrated here by the gray bars. If we look at the blue line, that is the average U.S. home price valuation going back over that 50 year span. What's very interesting to see is how resilient that housing prices have been over the last 50 years. And on average, homes have appreciated at about 5% per year in spite of those seven recessions. The point is, 
real estate tends to do very well in economic recessions. The reason being the Federal Reserve steps in, manipulates interest rates lower, and housing becomes more affordable, not less affordable. So even though house prices may still be going up, if interest rates are being slashed, the monthly payment and the affordability becomes better in times of recession. Number five, homeowners are sitting on record amounts of equity in the United States. According to the most recent numbers from CoreLogic, the average home nationally across the country has appreciated at a rate of about 4.7% over the last 12 months. Now, if you were a homeowner who owned a home in 2010, the average homeowner in the United States has seen appreciation in their property equal to $106,000. That's just the average homeowner. It's been a very, very good time to own real estate. Today, according to CoreLogic, 87% of homeowners have at least 20% equity in their homes. 58% of all homes in America have at least 60% equity. And 42% of all homes are owned free and clear. The average equity in a home that does have a mortgage is $177,000 in equity. Now compare that to the average amount of equity that a renter has in their household, which obviously is zero. You see what's happened very differently over the last 10 years from 2010 to 2020 is that Americans learned a really good lesson from the Great Recession. They realized that real estate doesn't always go up forever. There's going to be ebbs and flows and it's going to be important for them to keep as much equity in their home as humanly possible. Americans are not taking out nearly the amount of volume of home equity lines and cash out refinances out of their homes as they did before the Great Recession. They're allowing the home to truly be a storage of wealth. Conclusion, now is the time. We've seen an incredible demographic swing bringing more and more 33 year olds into the market as first time home buyers than any time in the past. And this is happening right at a time when the number of homes being built is dropping significantly because of COVID-19 and interest rates are near an all time low. Housing is very affordable for most Americans. And if you're interested in learning more about these record low interest rates, we believe that the home buying process, the mortgage process should be simple, low stress and fun. We're here and we'd love to hear from you.